This is Chapter 5, entitled, Analyzing Vulnerabilities, Part 1. In this chapter, we are to cover discussion on analyzing vulnerability scan results and leveraging information to prepare for exploitation. Asset categorization, which is also known as asset classification, is the process of placing business assets with similar characteristics into the same group. This helps a business shape how it works with each asset, such as how it prioritizes what assets receive the strongest security protections. From the perspective of a pen tester, categorizing assets is a helpful step in determining how to approach exploitation efforts. You might treat assets that belong to one category as less relevant to the test, even if their vulnerabilities will be easier to exploit. However, there are other approaches to categorization. For example, you might categorize assets in terms of the role they play in the business. Such categories might include people, particularly personnel, customers, and other business stakeholders, hardware, particularly computing equipment and peripherals, software, particularly operating systems and applications, data, particularly proprietary data or data about people, physical environment, particularly the office and where it is located, processes, particularly processes that enable the business to provide products and services directly to customers, and third parties, which are particularly business partners and members of the organization's supply chain. Vulnerability scanners are useful tools but they aren't foolproof. Scanners do sometimes make mistakes for a variety of reasons. When a scanner reports a vulnerability that does not exist, this is known as a false positive error. There are numerous reasons that the scanner may trigger a false positive, including that the scanner vendor may be trying to make their product look good by programming the scanner to report more vulnerabilities than there truly are, or the scanner is unable to recognize that another control is compensating for some identified deficiency, or the scanner is using a vulnerability database with outdated definitions, or the scanner incorrectly scores a vulnerability as more severe or easily exploited than it actually is, or customizations in the target environment are inadvertently triggering the scanner to identify a vulnerability. As a pen tester, you must be able to identify when results indicate a false lead on a vulnerability. Doing so will help you avoid wasting time chasing a lead that takes you to a dead end. There are several tactics you can employ to identify false positives. One of the most effective is results validation. Through a validation process, you compare what you've learned about the target environment to individual scan results and identify whether or not the results are truly applicable and accurate. Cybersecurity analysts interpreting reports often perform their own investigations to confirm the presence and severity of vulnerabilities. This process of evaluating and ranking vulnerabilities in terms of the potential threat they may pose to the organization implies that some action can and will be taken to minimize this threat. Adjudication is useful because it is one of the most important factors that will influence how you prioritize your exploitation efforts with the goal of maximizing the test's efficiency. Although you are certainly free to use your own system for scoring threat levels, it's usually a good idea to rely on an industry standard like the Common Vulnerability Scoring System, or CVSS, to do this for you. The CVSS is an open standard that defines how vulnerability data can be quantified while taking into account the degrees of risk to different types of systems or information. The Common Vulnerability Scoring System or CVSS, 
is an industry standard for assessing the severity of security vulnerabilities. It provides a technique for scoring each vulnerability on a variety of measures. Cybersecurity analysts often use CVSS ratings to prioritize response actions. Analysts scoring a new vulnerability begin by rating the vulnerability on six different measures, which are access vector, access complexity, authentication, confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Each of these measures is given both a descriptive rating and a numeric score. The access vector metric describes how an attacker would exploit the vulnerability and is assigned according to the criteria shown in the table. Authentication metric the authentication metric describes the authentication hurdles that an attacker would need to clear to exploit a vulnerability and is assigned according to the criteria in the table. Confidentiality metric. The confidentiality metric describes the type of information disclosure that might occur if an attacker successfully exploits the vulnerability. The confidentiality metric is assigned according to the criteria in the table. After you rank vulnerabilities by threat level or consult a service like CVSS that does this for you, you'll need to decide what vulnerabilities to dedicate your time and money on. After all, your deadline and limited budget will likely prevent you from testing every single vulnerability out there. By prioritizing vulnerabilities, you determine what vulnerabilities get the most attention when it comes to doing further research on how to exploit them. This ensures your time and money are being used effectively. As mentioned earlier, the results of your adjudication will have a large influence on how you prioritize vulnerabilities. Vulnerabilities marked critical will be the most attractive targets and may end up being the easiest to exploit. However, it's not always as simple as sorting by rating and then proceeding from there. Sometimes, you'll need to strike a balance between the likelihood of exploitation and the impact of that exploitation. As you analyze vulnerability scan results and observe the target environment, you will encounter recurring conditions and or common themes. This can be a lax physical security, employees not following corporate policy or best practices, lack of adequate cybersecurity training, lack of software patching and updating, lack of operating system hardening, poor software development practices, use of outdated networking protocols, or use of obsolete cryptographic protocols. By identifying common themes like this, you may stumble on a pattern of behavior. This pattern could extend to assets that you haven't yet tested or hadn't planned on testing. If you plan on testing them in the future, you can make certain educated guesses and assumptions that can make your job easier or lead you down certain paths that you otherwise wouldn't have taken. Ultimately, Identifying common themes provides you with a more complete picture of your target environment and its weaknesses. When analyzing vulnerability scan results, you need to determine an approach to categorizing client assets or categorize assets according to the approach you've chosen or identify the reasons why a scanner may produce false positives or conduct results validation by comparing results to what you know about the target environment, or acknowledge that you may not be able to eliminate false positives entirely, or rank vulnerabilities in terms of the potential threat they pose, or consider using an established ranking system like the CVSS, or determine vulnerability priorities to use your time and money as effectively as possible. Also, you may use threat rankings to influence how you prioritize vulnerabilities or strike a balance between a vulnerability's impact 
and its ease of exploitation, or consider mitigation costs as an effect on your vulnerability prioritization, or identify common themes in your vulnerability results and target observations, or leverage a pattern of behavior on future testing efforts, or use common themes to develop a more complete picture of the target environment. And this is the end of Chapter 5, Part 1. Keep safe, and together we learn as one.